Cowboy. Cows. More cows. More cows. Hello and welcome. If you not only follow the channel, but also follow us on Instagram, you'll know that I recently teased adding another car to the fleet. I needed something good for the winter, and something family friendly, something with some room in it. So I found an 05 ML 350 and we couldn't agree on a price. And during that time, one of the more prominent YouTubers had placed uh, his entire fleet for sale and he had a couple of older GM SUVs, solid ones, Escalade, Suburban, and I was really hoping to land one of them, but I'm sure thousands of others were, so I did. So I remember the times I owned in the past the Z71 Tahoe, and I set forth looking for one. And I couldn't find a nice one. I found one, but it was red, and I can't do red. And then I found this. This is a 1999 Cadillac Escalade. The OG, the very first year, the very first one. Yeah, I know, it's nothing more than a souped up Denali, but still, they're nice. There it is, the Vortec 5.7 liter, and as you can see, it's quite clean under the hood, very well taken care of, brand new interstate battery. He even, every time he cleans the k and air filter, he would print out how many miles were on the car when it was cleaned. Do a quick once around. This is where it was nicked. Scratched it up there. Brand new Michelin tires. Little nick and scrape there. Pretty clean here. He's got one of these aluminum push to close gas caps. And that's down the driver's side here. Little light scratch there. Nice pinstriping though. Very clean interior, and look at that. Kleenex boxes in the armrest. It's a gold package car, but they're starting to fade a little bit, as you can see. Little nick and scrape there. And from being bumped on the other side, the bumper's off a little bit here. But that's it. It's pretty clean other than that. And this isn't just any old 99 Escalade. I purchased this from the original owner that drove this off the lot, brand new, in 1999. Still has the window sticker, all kinds of receipts. He's rebuilt the engine, and most importantly of all, it's got no rust. So, unfortunately, shipping was very expensive. So, I booked a ticket, flew out, and I'm driving it back to Detroit right now. Yes, I know, I'm crazy, but say love you. So, what do I think of it so far? It's very clean, rides nice and smooth. But there is one caveat. Now, I don't remember the past uh, SUVs like this and trucks that I've driven being like this. So this one might be just worn out, but the steering, the middle is from here to there. It's not in any one particular spot. Let me explain. So we're currently going straight. 
All right, it's coming off to the right. Turn, 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 and there it catches. Now we go to the left lane. See how much I'm having to turn before I can correct? <laughs> oh, oh. Fun times. So as the wind blows and cars go past me and I pass other cars, namely semi-trucks, it gets a little concerning because you get a little close and then you start to steer the other way and not yet, not yet, and then all of a sudden, oh, there you go, it moves over. <laughs> oh, man. Oh! <laughs> I've driven boats with better steering feeling than this. <laughs> but hey. See, I'm still having a good time here. There's just something about a good, solid SUV like this. And I didn't pay much for it. I paid about, no, I paid actually less than a third of what the other uh, SUVs that I was looking at. Uh, I, I got a good deal on it. Yeah, I've got to drive it for two days straight, but hopefully everything will be all right. But other than the steering feel or the lack thereof, it's nice. So, set the cruise just so. Take my foot off now that it's opened up. No more turns, no more traffic. And let's just cruise. So the plan is to drive to Newton, Kansas. It is literally on my way. Stop there for the night, get a room, get some rest, and then head back to Detroit in one day. It's probably going to be about a 12, 13 hour drive and several tanks of gas, but we'll see how it goes. Here are some pictures from the actual ad of the car. And as you can see, it really is probably the cleanest one in the country. As a matter of fact, when I got it back to the shop, that was the first thing the guy said, that they had never seen one this clean in 15 years. Here are just a few pictures of the scenery driving out of New Mexico into Texas. I wish I would have had more time to stop and take in the sights, but I was on a timeline and I had to be back in Detroit in under 48 hours. When I came across this big fella, I knew I had to stop and take a picture. Those are all cows. Cows, cows for miles. Cows, and it smells like crap. Oh. More cows! More cows! See all those red blinking lights? Those are all windmills! As night fell and I started my way through Kansas, things got interesting. First, I got pulled over right after it got dark. Officer stated that my plates did not match the car. I told him, of course, I just bought the car. I showed all my paperwork. 
he asked me to step out of the vehicle and hop into his. I had to get out of the car and he ran all my information and made sure I was legit. I got back in the car and before I exited the county, there was another officer waiting for me who pulled me over, asked me the same series of questions. At first I thought that this was odd, but then I thought to myself, how many old school Cadillac Escalades with Michigan plates do they see rolling through Kansas? My guess is none. Honestly, the officers were very polite and professional and were just doing their job. I continued my way through Kansas, arriving at the hotel in Newton at around 1 a.m. Went straight up to my room and passed out. Sit rep. I found a car which I thought was local to where I was staying and I wanted to go see it this morning. It was a 95 Mercedes E320. Looked like a nice car, but it turned out to be almost two hours south of where I was. So I said, forget it. Had breakfast at the hotel, went outside with my coffee, said, you know what, let me start the car cold and listen to it. And it sounded fine. But then it started to leak antifreeze. Uh, it was leaking from both sides, right and left. So right away I thought, radiator hoses. This car does have a brand new radiator in it. So I didn't have any tools with me, unfortunately. I couldn't bring them on the plane with me. And I went to a few local places and they were all closed. One of them being Omega Auto Clinic. Uh, if you don't know who that is, look it up. It was... Uh, quite interesting. He was only a couple miles from where I was staying. So then I went and got a toolkit, gallon of antifreeze just in case, and found that both radiator hoses, the, uh, the clamps were finger tightened, it felt like. So I backed them off, slid the hoses on, tightened them back up, and drove around town to see if it'll leak. I'd rather it leak in town where I can get it fixed and so far so good by the praise of God uh, it's just it's God's infinite mercy that it didn't uh, one of the hoses didn't blow off on me from the pressure yesterday uh, in the middle of the night on the freeway so I'm a little behind schedule it's 11 or it's noon here which means it's one o'clock at home and I've got 12 to 13 hours to drive, so let's get to it. I'm a few hundred miles in. Still got more than half a tank. Still got some coffee, some water, another protein bar, some sunflower seeds. And I've still got nine hours to go. However, with everything that happened... Turn right onto Missouri 110, US 36 East. All right, I get it. You don't have to tell me 10 times to make a bloody turn. 